Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the creation of the most complex to date simulation of the entire universe. The simulation that was recently created by the scientists in Japan that sort of dwarfs everything else that ever existed. But I also wanted to discuss some of the previous simulations and what all of this is for and what the scientists are trying to discover by doing all of this over and over. And let's actually start with some of the more basic simulations I've been using on the channel for several years, the ones you can technically purchase and use yourselves. So for example, Universe Sandbox and the beautiful Space Engine are both meant to simulate the universe to some extent, with both of them doing a pretty good job, at least when it comes to smaller patches of the universe, such as for example, taking a look at what happens in the solar system, or trying to imagine what a typical galaxy or possibly a global cluster looks like. But they both obviously have their shortcomings. For Space Engine, it's the fact that things here are more or less static. So, for example, a star system is not going to be interacting with another star system. And so in this global cluster, for example, nothing is actually moving anywhere. Everything here is more or less in the same spot. Now, that's obviously because of the limitations and the inability to potentially simulate this on grandiose scales like what we have right here. Now, Universe Sandbox does almost the opposite. It tries to simulate the gravitational interactions between various objects, but depending on how powerful your computer is, even here you're going to start reaching your limitations pretty quickly. So in this simulation, once these moons start to collide and start creating more particles, that's when my computer can no longer really handle it. But when it comes to actual scientific simulations, normally this requires a supercomputer because of the limitations you can clearly see right here. And so in the last decade or so, a lot of different scientific teams started to create their own simulations, such as this one right here, known as the Universe Machine, that try to use as many cores as possible in order to create the most realistic simulation of as many objects as possible, interacting as they would in real life. And every few years, these so-called universes in a box or universes in a bottle have improved so dramatically and have improved so much that the effects they're showing us in real time allow the scientists to discover various features of galactic and star formation that they actually did not know existed. And in the last few years, I've been using a lot of these videos, like the one you see right here, that were originally created back in 2019 by the biggest and the most complex simulation of the universe in the box. This is known as the Illustrious Project. This project is freely available on the website in the description. And the cool thing here is that if you were to click on the Explorer, you sort of get the snapshot of one of the simulations where you can sort of zoom in and see one of the extremely detailed simulations of one of these universes in a box. That also allows you to change various properties of what you're actually looking at and allows you to visualize what a lot of the interaction between galaxies usually ends up producing. Now, I've previously discussed this project and the simulation in the video from approximately two years ago, but just to summarize, the biggest simulation to date involves creating a tiny universe that's approximately 230 million light years across and contain tens of thousands of different galaxies with a tremendous amount of detail and a lot of interacting particles. Here, there was approximately 20 billion particles representing dark matter, gas, stars, and a lot of supermassive black holes with the actual simulation lasting around 13.8 billion years, representing the age of the universe. And the point of the simulation was to try to build a representation of the universe as it evolved since the beginning of the Big Bang, allowing the scientists to visualize how all of these structures interact and what exactly they end up forming, both in terms of large-scale structures, but also in terms of the smaller interactions and small structures inside of every galaxy. Now, to produce this, the obviously, as I mentioned before, required a supercomputer. In this case, it used 16,000 different cores, and it's known as the Hazel Hunt supercomputer located in Germany. And to create all this, it required the scientists approximately a year of continuous calculations. According to them, if I were to use my computer to do this, it would take me approximately 15,000 years. But because of these simulations and the actual representation of the universe, this allowed them to discover several major phenomena that essentially involved a lot of the interaction between various types of particles in this model universe. For example, one of the major discoveries, as you can kind of see in this simulation, is a surprisingly common formation of various disk-shaped galaxies. They seem to be way more common than we originally anticipated. 
with many of these galaxies also containing things like spiral arms, things like bulges, and even various galactic bars extending across the galaxy. More importantly, some of the more unknown discoveries were actually in regards to the interaction between supernova explosions and the activity from supermassive black holes. Here it was all in regards to various types of outflow of gas that created a kind of a feedback loop with the gas being kicked out of the galaxy through supernova and supermassive black holes just to then return back into the galaxy to feed the black hole and create more supernova once again. Normally this is how we believe a lot of galaxies form today and how they evolve over time. And interestingly enough, a lot of these phenomena discovered were absolutely not programmed into the simulation. They sort of just happened naturally. And that's because of the complexity of the simulation itself, because of the number of particles, and also because of the time it represented in this simulation of the universe. But now the Japanese scientists took it a step further. Okay, like a really big step further. Introducing the Japanese project they refer to as Uju, which is Japanese for outer space. And this project is, well, it's basically lustrous, but like on steroids. It's illustrious times 100, and I'm not exaggerating this. It literally involves 2 trillion different particles. And it also represents a universe that's around 9.6 billion light years across. It's bigger, it's more complex, and it's way, way more advanced than Illustrious was ever able to produce. Now, let me just show you the part of the simulation that was released by the scientists that you can also find in the link in the description below. And so what you're looking at right here is basically the interaction between a lot of these particles and the creation of the, once again, universe in the box. But this time, a tremendously massive universe. A universe that is almost exactly the same size as the actual observable universe. Just a little bit smaller. And honestly, this is absolutely mind-blowing. So, we don't really know what's going to be discovered here just yet, mostly because the whole point of this was just to create a simulation, but chances are, a lot of incredible discoveries are going to be made once the data from this is analyzed, and once the scientists start to look deep into what actually was created by a lot of these particles interacting. And interestingly, even the scientists themselves refer to this as a kind of a time machine. Here you can go forward, you can go backward, you can stop time, you can zoom in, you can choose a single galaxy, you can choose a single galactic cluster, and you can basically do anything you want with it and investigate anything you want just to discover various properties created in this unusual and somewhat realistic universe. And what makes this, I guess, to some extent more exciting, especially for amateur scientists or amateur astronomers, is that all of this is freely available to download. But it's not just like a simulation you can download like Space Engine. It does require a little bit of knowledge in terms of data retrieval, and also a little bit of knowledge in terms of data processing as well. And so, for example, in order to access something like this, and to be able to see what the scientists saw in their simulation, you would first have to access the data through this publicly available data set right here. With, I guess, the easiest way to do this being the GitHub page right here, which has a collection of different Python tools and Jupyter notebooks that have several examples and several commands that you can use, especially if you have knowledge of Python, with the basics on how to install this and how to use this available in there as well. But because this data represents approximately 100 terabytes of data, it would be very, very difficult to download all of this and to try to recreate this on your own computer. And so to try to recreate something like this, it would require a little bit of data processing and the ability to create visualizations using the available data. And so there are no actual videos available just yet. But ultimately, one day, hopefully someone is going to be able to produce something similar to Space Engine by using the data collected from these various studies, allowing us to go into any time frame and allowing us to zoom in on any of these objects in order to see some of these most incredible and most detailed representations of different objects in the universe. So in this particular case, the simulation was able to create something that was only a few light years across. Many that, in theory, you should be able to see various star systems and possibly even certain planets. But to be honest, to create something like this as an actual simulation similar to Space Engine might never really be possible, simply because of the complexity of things involved here. Now, it would be great if someone did it, but chances are it will never happen. Mostly because the actual commercial technology is just not there yet. 
we might be able to have a lot of visualizations and a lot of videos similar to this one, but we're not probably going to have a space engine-like exploration tool for quite a while. Now, hopefully someone proves me wrong, but chances are we're going to be limited to just looking at the data or looking at videos. Either way though, it's still quite impressive at what the scientists were able to achieve using the computer you see right here known as Aterui 2, the most powerful supercomputer when it comes to astronomical simulations. Now, one intriguing feature coming out of this simulation is the fact that they mostly focused on the idea of dark matter. And so in this simulation, the mysterious halos of dark matter more or less control what you see forming. And notice how the actual formation does seem to resemble the actual universe we observe in real life as well. Which of course implies that, well, maybe dark matter halos exist after all. At the same time, the purpose of the simulation is to actually try to see the future as well, or essentially try to see the eventual fate of the universe. Now, it's obviously not entirely clear what exactly is going to happen to the universe from this simulation, and the scientists have not really mentioned anything just yet, but I'm sure a lot of future studies investigating the last moments of the simulation might be able to show us what's going to happen to a lot of galactic clusters, a lot of different uh, large formations, including of course galaxies, and a lot of other mysterious formations, such as the extremely massive cosmic web. And in case you were wondering, the supercomputer contained over 40,000 different computer cores and also took over a year to generate approximately 3 petabytes of data that were then converted to 100 terabytes of data that can be easily analyzed using Python. And so it's sort of mind-blowing to know that, hypothetically, you could download the entire universe and it's only about 100 terabytes in size. And since this is approximately 100 times more advanced than the previously mentioned Illustris project, I can only imagine what we're going to achieve in the next 5 or even 10 years. For all we know, we might be able to create a universe that physically contains actual planets and moons, and potentially even has a lot of other interactions on the surface as well. Now this is obviously something we might be able to create in the future, and in theory nothing is really stopping us from getting there, but for now, in 2021, this right here is the best we have a universe that's about 9 billion light years across and that represents approximately 13 point billion years of evolution. It contains approximately 2 trillion particles, with each of the particles representing something different, possibly a part of the star, possibly some sort of a gas, or maybe a black hole. And so definitely a really impressive achievement. By the way, you can learn more about all of this from the paper in the description below. And so I guess for now that's sort of all I wanted to mention. Although maybe there's one more thing. The idea of a universe as a simulation. And I'm sure someone in the comments is going to mention this. Does this actually prove that maybe we live in an actual supercomputer simulation created by something else? Well, to some extent, there's really no way to prove this. And to other extent, what we're creating with these simulations like the space engine or the one I just showed you, the one known as Uchu, it doesn't necessarily represent everything we know about the universe. For example, it does not at all simulate the idea of particle physics. It also completely ignores the idea of quantum physics. This mostly shows us the interaction between various particles influencing each other gravitationally. And so because of this, it still is extremely simple compared to what we actually have as a reality and where we live. And trying to simulate this would be almost impossible. Just the fact that we have to simulate quantum physics and the idea of particles being in different places at different times, that would be almost impossible. That's something we cannot achieve even using some of the most complex computers on the planet right now. And so since there is no actual way to prove or disprove this, I'm just going to leave this as a kind of a philosophical question. But in my opinion, it's very likely that we do not live in a simulation. And there are actually some really strong arguments against that, and we'll talk about some of these in some of the future videos. But anyway, until then, check out the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.